Our penultimate speaker is a musician and a writer based here in Calgary. In her spare time, she's the music lead for the Calgary Queer Church and makes music with Blend, a woman's singing ensemble. Please welcome Miranda Martini. Thank you. Let's bring that down a bit. Uh, Peter, you and I are uh, script buddies here, doing it old school. Um, just a brief proviso before I get started. I am a writer uh, and not a designer, and as such, I didn't think that hard about the resolution of my images. So just fair warning that it's going to get wild with pixels up there in a minute, and I do apologize for that. <clears throat> Since every presentation needs a tortured metaphor, I like Tetris. I like the music, which is incidentally the 19th century Russian folk song Korobienki. Uh, I like how it makes my brain work faster. And most of all, I like the sensation of fitting blocks neatly into one another. That's kind of the itch I scratch when I write songs. You've all probably had someone tell you to think outside the box at some point. Not me. I've learned that I'm actually most at home inside boxes as an artist, and that once inside, I find myself in a world of infinite possibilities. I've been writing songs for nearly two decades now, uh, professionally for about seven years. Uh, I have a BFA in creative writing and a master's of music in songwriting. I'm gonna do something very uncouth here in a minute and briefly quote myself, uh, specifically a presentation on concept albums and song cycles I gave during my master's. Um, so the images you see here are the covers of some of my favorite uh, concept albums from the past half century. Um, Dr. Joe Bennett, who is the, the head of songwriting at Bath Spa University, uh, loved to say, we are always creative inside a box. And I think about that all the time. Um, these images that you're, uh, you're looking at, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is a lot of words, so feel free to just ignore them. Uh, the point I really wanted to make with this is that uh, when you look at a given group of popular songs, there's often a lot in common between them, from meter to length to rhyme scheme, uh, and yet there's so much variety even within that narrow range of content that unites ABBA and Metallica and Salt and Pepper. Um, so this is the cover of my song cycle, uh, which was 12 songs, each, uh, each song for a month of the year. Um, I'm really rattled by a blank page, so when I find a prompt like this one that I can just pour myself into, it's like sitting on a sled at the top of a hill and someone just comes up and gives me a gentle push. Um, that's what happened with John Ware Reimagined, a play I got to be a part of and write music for. Uh, the playwright said she was working on a piece about the cowboy John Ware and could I write a country song but make it soulful and it also had to relate to the southern Alberta spring flood of 1902 somehow. Um, and I said, okay. Um, and I did. I wrote Spring of 1902, which is a song that opens and closes the play. Um, so there's a misconception about writing that it's, if it's hard, it has to be worthwhile. We all know a tortured artist, constantly exhausted by their efforts. Um, that can make for compelling fiction, but I'm here to tell you that it's okay to make the creative process easier on yourself. I once heard John K. Sampson of The Weaker Than say that writer's block is a bourgeois affectation that keeps you from doing your work. Plumbers don't get to stop plumbing because they have plumber's block. They just find a different way into the problem. So if I'm beating my head against my desk, it's often a sign to take a break or try a different approach. Uh, there's another related misconception about writing that if it's instinctual, it must be genius. I fall prey to this all the time. Sometimes I'll have a fully formed song come pouring out of my head like Zeus giving birth to Athena and it feels like a higher power is holding my pen. I get dizzy, I'm feverish, I'm breathless and I have this rush of endorphins like I've just run a marathon. Um, and then the finished product is okay. You know, it's not great, it's not bad because the process doesn't actually have anything to do with the product. There's this sexy, sexy idea of how inspiration happens where papers are flying everywhere and the editing all happens in a montage. And it's so damaging because if new writers don't feel that way all the time, they think they're doing it wrong. Uh, writing is messy and iterative, it's work. Sometimes it's enjoyable work, but it's work. They say that Leonard Cohen got dressed and sat at his desk every morning and wrote like it was his nine to five because it was. I'm not saying we all have to grind out poems like Leonard Cohen, but um, you can just write however you want to write, but do what you need to do to fit your creative practice into your day. 
Uh, to get back to the Tetris concept for a second, I mostly have ideas in blocks. And I love the story of the Beatles writing uh, the song A Day in the Life because it really models the way my brain works with, uh, you know, a verse here, a bridge there, a little snippet, and then when I have enough, I just sort of squish them all together and make a song. Um, these are the notes for my song, 18 Hours, another one for John Ware Reimagined, which I scrawled in a notebook in around 2011, and then I didn't finish it for another three years. Um, but I think the core was there at the time, and it's really interesting to see how something like that can evolve with me slowly improving it. Um, sometimes I do something I call plagiarizing past Miranda. Uh, this is the memo app where I keep any stray ideas. A lot of them are like 30 seconds long, and they're called things like riff and E and harpsichord noodling and just some garbage. Um, if I'm feeling stuck with a song, I'll uh, go diving in my idea dumpster until something shakes loose. And it can really be a dumpster sometimes. I recently realized I stole the idea for one of my best songs from an episode of Gilmore Girls. Um, and the last song I wrote just like a day ago was inspired by a piece of fan fiction about two YouTubers I like, which I think tells you everything you need to know about me just in general. So don't be too proud to look for inspiration everywhere. Um, as this uh, Twitter user Quartzen points out, as a culture we have a really poor understanding of how art gets made in general. It feels really uncomfortable and rude to even talk about it, in part because that process looks so different for everyone, but also because as an artist it can feel really vulnerable to show your hand, especially when you fail. And you fail! The blocks don't fit. They sit on top of one another, pointy bits akimbo, and you can't find a way to fix it. And that's so scary to be transparent about your process because it feels like once people know how you did something, they'll be able to see all the ways in which you could have done it better. That said, it's important to understand your process as an artist because as my boy Leonard says, the cracks are where the light gets in. He described writing as being like a bear stumbling into a beehive or a honey cache. I'm stumbling right into it and getting stuck, and it's delicious and it's horrible, and I'm in it, and it's not very graceful, and it's very awkward, and it's very painful, and yet there's something inevitable about it. Writing is work, but it's also play. And as long as you have the building blocks, when it all comes crashing down, you can always start the level over and try again. Thank you.